All right, so we're going to be drawing this part. This is going to be your aluminum derby car blank. So we're going to prep this material to go onto a fixture for the rest of the machining. Um, now, I don't know what everybody's design of their car is going to look like, so we're not going to get into all that. We're going to treat this as a Mac 150 uh, beginner lesson. So what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to just going to basically draw this model here. All right, now, yours may be different. I know my uh, first op, essentially, so we're going to be putting these holes in. I know my first op was different, but for the, for the sake of this assignment, we're just going to go through the fundamentals. So we're just going to create this part right here. All right. So I'm going to come over here and I'm, go, I'm already in the folder that I want to be in. All right. So I'm going to go new design and we're going to draw this part. So I've got a print uh, directly in front of me. So if you want to print out that PDF, um, then it will certainly help you. So you don't have to bounce back and forth between um, looking at something on a computer screen and then drawing it. Um, now, when, uh, when I draw this, you know, obviously everybody's had uh, CAD 231 or CAD 120 or something. So, um, you know, we, we all should be pretty, pretty, um, you know, fundamentally stable in, in uh, drawing. So I'm just going to draw this. I'm not going to spend, um, I don't intend on spending a ton of time going over the details of drawing. Um, again, this is a CAM class, but before you can make it, you have to be able to draw it uh, in most cases. All right, so I'm going to go up here. We're going to create a sketch, and I'm just going to go on this top plane. And for right now, that doesn't really matter. All right. And I'm, I'm going to redo that. I'm just going to go right here, create, create sketch. And I'm going to go on this plane here. Now, again, you can go on any plane you want, but it just makes sense for that one. Okay. All right. And I'm going to start with a rectangle and I'm going to go a center rectangle. We're going to drag that out. Okay. And then I'm going to dimension it. So seven inches by, all right. So Kevin has got this drawn as 1.75 minimum. All right. So that, that's going to be, um, you know, depending on how you do it, um, I tell you what, we'll draw at 1.75. Just to uh, keep it real good and simple. All right, so 1.75 right there. And then I'm simply going to hit E for extrude. And I'm going to extrude this up to two inches. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is put these holes in the bottom. So I'm going to open up a sketch. All right, and I'm going to do a line. And I'm going to say, just going to go from here to here. All right, I'm going to dimension that to 3.625, which is the distance from hole to hole on those pin locations. Okay. So notice it, it's constrained lengthwise, but it's not constrained any other way. All right. It is constrained horizontal, but that's it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to grab that line. I'm going to press and hold control. And I'm going to click that center point, And I'm simply going to make those coincident. Okay. Now, it can still move this way, but it cannot move up and down and it cannot move lengthwise. It, it is constrained. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is put my, and, and, you know, we're, we hadn't put any holes in yet, but don't, don't let that, uh, worry you. Okay. 
So then I'm going to draw a line here, hit escape, draw a line here, hit escape. Okay. Now, those I'm going to make one inch and I'm going to set these to equal. So all, all I'm doing here is clicking, holding control, clicking again, and set to equal. All right. Now, why is that good? Um, you know, this design is not going to change. All right. But let's say that you were working on something that needed to be flexible. If you change that to 1.25 or if you change that to 6 inches, they update. You don't have to change it twice. Okay. All right. Now, these holes are on the center line, all right? Meaning the center of this line needs to be coincident with that. So I'm going to click here and here. Well, no, I'll tell you what, we're not going to do that. We're going to just draw another line. So I'm going to draw another line, snap it there, and another line here. Now, notice you see that little triangle that pops up? That triangle? That tells me that I snapped to the midpoint. You see how it can move, but it's going to always stay on the midpoint, even as this line grows or changes or whatever, it's going to stay at the midpoint. Okay. Now I'm simply going to make this and this horizontal. So now the midpoint of that line is always going to be at the midpoint of this part. Okay. So then I'm going to come in and start putting some dimensions in. All right. So from here to here, it says it right here on the print, 5.125. Okay. So we know from there to there is 5.125, but we still need to give it a distance from here to here. So I'm going to come up here to the, uh, to the front. And I'm going to say D for dimension. We know we want this at 0.75. Again, that's on the print. Okay. Now, again, we've got it constrained within itself, but we don't have it constrained with. We've got it constrained with itself, but we don't have it constrained to the part yet. All right, so see it's still still floating this way. All right, so I'm going to come right here and I'm just going to say 0.625. All right, now when I did that, notice all the sketch went black. And what that means is it is fully defined. That means that this sketch cannot move. I'm grabbing it, trying to move it. It cannot move. All right, it's fully defined. Now watch, if I delete this, well, maybe that was a bad example, but if I delete this, see how these lines are blue? It's because it can move. Go back and put that back in. Okay. Now, we've got our locations. So we've got our endpoints, our locations. So, I don't necessarily need these lines for anything. Um, and it's th this isn't crucial to do, but it's something that can just make your sketches a little cleaner. Um, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to select all of these lines. And I'm just going to make them construction. Okay. Notice that made them dashed. See, there's a normal line. And then I will... Make them construction again. You only have to do it once, obviously. And I was control clicking as I was clicking those lines. It's surprisingly difficult to remember to say that. I'm, I apologize. So 
we've got this laid out. Now we just need to go in here and put our holes in. Now you can, uh, you can do this with the create, tell you what, I'm going to finish this sketch. So you see that I've still got my sketch showing. All right. And I'm going to show you a little bit easier way. So I've got my sketch showing, I can hide it. I can show it. Um, you know, I can show the original sketch. I can hide it, what, whatever. All right. And that, that will just kind of help keep you sane, especially if you get into a complex part that's got a lot of geometry and a lot of shapes and sketches to it. Um, so I'm going to go up here to hole. And th this is a, a really neat little tool that will go ahead and put drill points and things like that in it for you. Um, you know, which, which makes your life a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the pinholes that are right here and right here. So I'm going to go multiple. All right. And I'm going to say, where are we at? Drill. There we go. All right. Now we're not, we're not tapping it or any of that stuff. So we're just going to, to just do simple. Okay. Now for location for my sketch points, I'm going to select here. I'm going to click and click. Okay. Now, obviously it looks huge right now because I haven't told it the sizes yet. So the size, the diameter of these ringed holes are 0.1875. Okay. My drill point is 118. All right, that, that's fine. You can see the little drill point in there. My depth, let's see here. We are going to make that 0.250. Now, notice where that's going to. That 250, that's going to, to where it stops being full body, where the 118 degree drill point starts. All right, and if you look at your print, that's the way this is dimensioned. Okay, so that's done. So those holes are good to go. And I'm going to turn this sketch back on. Now I'm going to go hole again, except this time we're going to do the 632. Yep. 632 tapped holes. So we're going to go multiple. We're going to go simple tapped with the drill point. For my locations, I'm going to click here, 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 and here. All right, we're going to make this a 632. 2B is fine. Okay. And you don't have to model the threads if you don't want to. Uh, I'll show you what the difference in that is. Um, so we'll start out with them non modeled. And the depth of these are 0.2. And then OK. So I'm going to turn off this sketch so you can see. That is what non-model threads look like. It's it just it's kind of like a picture of a thread wrapped around the inside of it. And I'll show you what the model threads look like. That's what model threads look like. So you can, you've actually got surfaces in there. All right. The only problem with that is it, it's just a little more demanding on the computer. Okay. So we've got those locations in there. All right. Keep in mind, this is my, you know, call it the front, call it the back, whatever. But this part is not symmetric. All right. So, well, it's symmetric in the Y, but it's not symmetric in the X with, with respect to the stock. Okay. So the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to punch these holes in the side. So I'm going to right click and say sketch. I'm going to start with a line. I'm going to rotate this around. I'm going to put it like that so that I'm looking at it, how it's on the print. 
Okay. So again, I've got the short side to the right. And if you look at your print, that short side is on the right. Okay. So I'm just going to draw a line just like that. It's not horizontal until I make it horizontal. All right. So the distance from the edge over to here is a hundred thousandths. All right. This is 4.375. And it is one inch away from the front. So if I punch a 440 hole here, I'll be good. And if I punch one here, I'll be good. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish this sketch. Actually, I'm going to go back in here and edit it. I'm going to change that to construction. Finish sketch. So. And again, you can turn a sketch on, off, whatever you want to do. Now, before I punch the holes, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to project this over to this side. And, and I, I'll, I'll show you why here in a second. So I'm going to, all I did was right click, went sketch. It asked me, what's the first thing I want to sketch? I'll do that one more time. Right click, sketch. It's asking me, what do I want to do? I want to project. All right. And now it's asking me what geometry. That geometry there. And OK. So now I have two identical sketches on opposing sides. I'm going to come up here to hole. Multiple, my sketch points are here, here, huh, it's not letting me do it from different sides, okay, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and model these threads, and as far as depth, I'm going to go ahead and drill these 750 deep, if you look at your print, you need a half inch full thread. All right, so we need to drill it beyond that, obviously. Okay, so, okay. That looks good. Gonna come over here back to this side, hole again. Here, here, it remembered all my information. And okay, now let me explain to you why I draw things that way is let's say you know two weeks from now you decide that you want to change something okay let's um let's you know there's not a whole lot you can change on this but let's let's just say that uh that your instructor comes out he says hey uh we found out that we we drew this part wrong uh we need you to change something all right so let's say that that change was this distance right here. Let's say that needed to be 0.75. Okay. Sounds simple enough, but you would have to do it two different times, right? But if you've got these sketches talking to each other, then you don't have to do that. You just have to change it the one time. All right. And again, that I, I understand that that sounds like a, you know, minuscule thing, but when you get into bigger sketches and bigger models and things like that, it really, really helps out. I'm just going to inspect. I just clicked I for inspect. Then I'm going to click right there. So it, it's showing me 931. Um, if, uh, Show snap points. Come on. So it's going it's going to fight me here. 
Just uh, do it like this. I'm going to go inspect. Ugh, you're ugly. All right. If you want to know how big it is or the size of it, you can always just go back to the sketch to find a location. Uh, the inspect tool uh, in Fusion works really, really well for like straight stuff. You know, if you need to measure that, need to measure this, whatever. All right, works uh, works works pretty well for that. All right, but um, but other than that, it it, it doesn't do a whole lot for you. Um, okay, so um, I understand this is a different way of drawing. Uh, that this is this is uh, I'm sure substantially different than than a lot of people draw, but there's a reason to it. Um, you know, let let's just go back to edit this sketch, um, and I'm sure that y'all have drawn something that after you drew it you had to make a change and the whole model just exploded all right and when i say exploded i'm not talking about like the model came apart i'm talking about you just started getting errors and started getting all sorts of weird stuff um if you draw things with constraints and just proper cad etiquette then it that doesn't happen um so you know let's say that we need to change this to 2.25 right when you finish that sketch, notice everything stayed the same, like my bolt pattern stayed the same, right? Distance to distance stayed the same. Everything stayed the same. Okay. So you go back over here. Let's change it back. 1.75. Everything's good. Okay. All right. And then... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this and I'm just going to say JRM. And if, if this was you, you would put John Doe, whatever, um, you know, aluminum derby car blank. Okay. And that's what I'll name mine. That works for me. Save. Okay. Now in the next video, we're going to get into the cam. All right, so we've got our model. Now we need to get into the cam. All right.